Hi there, Logic Language learners. It would be good if I could get the first sentence out. So, today's class is about the word ing. Okay, so this is obviously a word which appears in English and not in French. So, there are multiple places in English where we use ing, and we need to work out what we're doing in French uh, because this is actually really going to save you time when it comes to verbs. Um, so, let's have a quick talk about some of the places where we use ing. In English okay so the first time we use ing um, is with a continuous tense okay so for example I am speaking to you right now uh, as opposed to I speak okay uh, I was speaking to you yesterday as opposed to you know I used to speak or, or I spoke so this is the first use of ing okay so let's have a little look what do we need to rule out straight away in French? We need to totally, totally, totally cancel the idea that we need to do anything with ing when it comes to verbs that we conjugate. Okay, so for example, if I said he is speaking, which tense is he speaking? Present, yeah? And what's the hand signal with my method for the present? Bum bum, he speaks. So we need to remember, he speaks and he is speaking are the same thing. So he speaks is going to be il parle. He is speaking is going to be il parle. So that ing we can forget, okay? I was speaking, okay? Which tense is I was speaking? Yeah, it's this descriptive tense. It's this wishy-washy, as I call this, the imperfect. And those of you that work with me know that the was tense in French needs an A sound for, most, for the most part. So I was speaking, I've got two words, I've got je parlais. So there's no need to think of the ing in any way in this case. So I was speaking je parlais. Yep, AIS. If that's complicated for you, I strongly recommend you go and have a look at the video on the, uh, on the imperfect. So, that's kind of disappointing, disappointing, <laughs> because there are times when we want to be able to show that we're in the middle of doing something. I can't talk now, I'm making a video. Yeah, uh, I wasn't, help, I wasn't there, I was talking to my friend Pilar. So there's a little phrase you guys can use to show the difference between I speak and I'm speaking, which I think is great, but don't use it too much, okay? And this phrase is the verb to be plus en train de plus your infinitive. Okay, so for example, I am in the process of plus the long form. So, for example, I am speaking to you now. Je suis, from the verb to be, I am, en train de, E-N-T-R-A-I-N, de, en train de parler. Je suis en train de vous parler maintenant. Okay? I can't talk now. Mom, I am making a video. Je ne, peux pas, je ne peux pas parler maintenant. Maman, je suis en train de, je suis en train de faire une video. Okay? So, en train de, we could quite easily stick that uh, in the was tense because all we're going to do is play with was. So, I was speaking with Luke yesterday. J'étais, I was, en train de, in the process of, parler, yeah, infinitive, with Luke. Okay, he was dancing, il dansait, normal was. He was in the process of dancing with Mary. Il était en train de. He was in the process of danser avec Mary. But do not use that every single time. You need an ing. Yeah, that is only on the special occasion you really want to show that this is happening now. This is in the phase of happening. So, the government is uh, is in the process of changing. You know, le, le gouvernement est en train de changer, en train de modifier. So that's a little great thing there. So, next thing with verbs. We can use a very exciting rule to get us out of having to conjugate verbs. Okay? And this trick is ing 
becomes A N T. Okay, this is the gerund. Yeah, gerundi. So, if you take your verb, so let's say we took parler. Okay, so let's take parler over here, and let's straight away go with the new form parlant. Okay. O N S and A N T sound pretty similar. Parlant, parlant. Okay. So this is a pretty good way of guaranteeing that you're going to get the right ing. Okay, you're going to get the right ing. Okay, so for most verbs, there are a couple of things which happen in be and have, which I shall deal with um, in another video probably. But any verb you think of, if you go to the new form, so for example, vendre, we sell, nous vendons. Okay, vendons, vendons, it's going to sound the same. Or you're going to find the hard, those of you that know my method. So, sortir, to go out, the hard is sort. We go up to the T, so sortant. Okay? And this will give you going out. Now, when do we use this one? This one is used... in two situations. It's used to make uh, an, an adjective, and it's used... Uh, to basically start a uh, clause, a part of a sentence. So, for example, if I said, speaking to Joe, I discovered her grandmother was French. Okay? So, yes, you can say, I spoke with Joe and I discovered that her grandmother was French. Oui, j'ai parlé avec Joe. J'ai découvert que sa grand-mère était française. Yeah. If I wanted to say, in speaking with Joe, yeah, so you're going to use in, en, parlant, in speaking, okay? In speaking with Joe, en parlant avec Joe, j'ai découvert, and then your second sentence will be the same, okay? Um, Practicing French. I realized I love it, you can all say. So what's the verb to practice? Pratiquer. So what's we practice? Nous pratiquons. So in practicing, en pratiquant, A-N-T. So en pratiquant le français, I realized, je me suis rendu compte, que je l'adore, que ça me plaît, that it pleases me. Okay? So this is basically what is going to happen with an ing. Let's do another one. Um, uh, in choosing her wedding dress, in choosing her dress, she, no, let's give a simpler one, in, uh, in choosing, in buying, because it's quite a formal heavy thing to say. Okay, the government, let's go back to the government again. So the government, in, um, through changing, in changing the system, the government... Uh, has increased the potential for whatever. So we change, nous changeons, in changing, en changeant. Okay? So we had changeant. And those of you that don't remember with the G, if we have, um, we, we have to have an E after our G, otherwise we're going to get changeant. Yeah? Uh, we can have a G um, with an A, but that would be change. So again, I'm going to need this E, okay? So in changing, en changeant, okay, I'm going to need this. If you are doing exams, then the only time this is really going to affect you is with manger. We eat, nous mangeons. There is an E before the ONS. So in changing the system, en changeant le système, or ce système, the system, the government, whatever. So this is great for A-levels, this is great for GCC. Wow, go for it. Certainly for A-levels. So it sounds better than the government changed the system. Da, 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 da. Okay? So do one more for me. Um, in deciding to uh, allow this kind of thing, en décidant de, remember décider de from last week's video, en décidant de, Permettre ce genre de choses. Okay. Um, let's write that one up. So, en décidant de 
permettre ce genre de choses. Ok um, En décidant de permettre ce genre de choses, en décidant de permettre ce genre de choses. So that's our A and T ing. A and T I N G. Now, next ing. Ok And can I signal the best one and the most commonly used one? is yet to come. I'm doing the little annoying tricksy one first. First, first. So, going back to our A-N-T, okay? There are plenty of adjectives which come from a verb. I've just used one. Annoying. Yeah? Annoying. It's annoying. He's annoying. Luke is annoying. Comes from the verb to annoy. Okay? Calming. It's very calming. I love going to the beach. My mum has a house in Wales, I love going there, it's very calming. So which do you think came first, the word calming or to calm, okay? So you have a little choice here, you sort of think, well, calm was a word and to calm became a verb and then calming is the form of that verb, so they're all sort of linked. Exciting, okay, probably the verb came first, to excite, yeah, I'm excited, it's exciting, okay? So a general little trick for you with adjectives yeah, is if they come from a verb, A on the end of them, not all the time, not all the time, we have délicieux, délicieux, sportif, sportif, we have loads of forms of adjectives which don't have this. But if they come from a verb, it's probably going to be an A will give me the ED, and an A and T will give me the ING. So if I took the verb to tire, Fatigué, so the verb would be fatigué. Yeah, we've got a nice ER verb. Yeah, fatigué, tired. So let's just say I tired the kids. We don't tend to use it that much very often, do we? We say I am tired, but I tired out the kids or I tired the kids, you know, on a, on a day out. J'ai fatigué, like j'ai mangé. Okay, so fatigué there would just become. Fatigué with the accent, and that gives me my adjective. So I am tired. Je suis fatigué. And to be honest, you probably learned je suis fatigué first. Yeah, you probably learned the adjective first. So what would give me tiring? I'm going to swap where I had a, and I'm going to pop in a and t. Fatigant. Yeah, let's do another one. Calming. So the verb to calm, hardly surprisingly, is calmer. Yeah, calmer. Ça me calme. That calms me. Yeah? Calmed, calmé, we just say it's calm. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't really say the sea was calmed, would we? We'd say the sea was calm. Yeah, la mer était calme. But it's very calming, okay? Calme, calmant, yeah? Calmant, we find the hard calmant, A-N-T. And again, what would be another way of finding it if the verb were calmé? We calm, nous calmons, O-N-S. Uh, all we're going to do is swap O and S, so that would be nous calmant, for A and T, okay? Now, this is an adjective, yeah, so excitant, exciting, uh, énervant, great one, from the verb to annoy, okay? So, uh, what are we doing? Let's do, let's do some different ones. Um, énervant, where am I going with this? Um... um Let's do a rude one, just to prove the point. So, pardon the expression, but to shit in French is chier, okay? Chier. It's shitting, which is absolutely disgusting, an expression, means it's annoying. Say chiant. Horrible one to use, do not use it in your exams, but there we go. Um, énervé, annoying, to annoy, énervé. So the core would be énerve, that annoys me, ça m'énerve. I'm annoyed, je suis énervé, je suis énervé. It's annoying, c'est énervant. So you will soon see I'm doing a video on how to use words to their maximum potential in an exam. And this is one of the examples we're talking about. I'm losing the board here, pardon me. Um, um, there we go. Um, this is one of the things I'm talking about. You have one verb. You haven't done your revision, shame on you. You have one verb, how can I use it three ways? I can use it as a verb, so ça m'énerve, that annoys me. 